Standing on a Million Lives has done quite a bit to impress me. It's an isekai, a guy taking to another world, but it tells the story in a way that feels like the way shows like this should be. A lot of isekai anime are maligned for being little more than escaped as fantasy, and yes, those can be fun at times, but I want something with a bit more substance. And I think this one provides just that. In fact, it's the only non-comedy isekai I have liked since probably ReZero came out four years ago. And yeah, I've tried a few of them. Granted, some others are well-liked, but I disagree on this. Back to this one, though. One of the things I really like about it is that it focuses quite a bit on the characters' lives on Earth. Partly because, yes, they go back to Earth after each quest, but that makes it feel like this isn't just a new life for them, but a temporary one they're trying to get through. And there's a lot of focus on who they were on Earth and how that has shaped them in the fantasy world. In fact, that's probably the thing I like the most about the show, and I wish you would focus more on that. I like seeing how Yotsua is cruel and calculating, because that's how the world has made him. He's a loner who doesn't care about others on Earth, so why would he be any different in this fantasy world? Or we also have Shindo, whose determination to shape her life on Earth is also affecting her life here, though we don't get quite as many good moments with her. Again, they need to focus more on this. And this is one of the issues with the show. It's like, yes, there's these interesting parts, but then also some less interesting parts. I guess that's kind of every show, but it's evident here. One of the things I do like, though, is the how the show approaches the battles involving the heroes. Typically, heroes in a show like this are super overpowered, and they are at no risk of dying, one way or the other. It's different here, sort of. The heroes are quite weak, especially at first, and they can and do die on a regular basis. But the twist is that when they die, as long as one of them stays alive, they'll just revive again soon. This allows them to shift. This lets the show like shift the stakes around. Letting the, this lets the show. This lets the anime shift the stakes around, letting the heroes fail on a regular basis. They no longer have to be saved from death from a last minute. They no longer have to be saved from death at the last minute, but they can die. Granted, they can't all die, but that's like less plot armor. And it's a creative way to handle it, because this means that the characters can fail, they can be beat up by enemies, they can be killed by enemies, and then try again, figure out a way, and then eventually win. But while the main characters definitely do have plot armor, it doesn't necessarily extend to the other characters in the world, which leads to some very interesting dynamics, though I won't get into spoilers. So yeah, this might not be the greatest show ever, but... I feel like it shows what Isekai can be when it's taken seriously. And it doesn't have to be completely amazing or aim for the greatest show ever, but it can just tell an interesting fantasy story woven through characters that were from Earth. And yeah, after making this, I'm going to go watch more because I want to see how that episode ends. I hope I don't have an evil cliffhanger at the end. But yes, thank you for watching for joining me for day two of the 12 Days of Anime. And did I say it was for the 12 Days of Anime at the start? Not in my script. I don't know if I ad it on this take. Whatever. I will talk to you tomorrow with something else. We'll see what. Talk to you then.